could easily be said that Louisiana's plantation country is defined by the iconic Mississippi River. Even before the steamboat was invented, farmers flocked to this area to try their luck at making a fortune off of the area's fertile ground and ended up settling in cities like Port Allen and Livingston that surround the capital city of Baton Rouge. As you drive down the historic river road and gander at majestic plantations that were built here in the early 19th century, you will see just how successful many of these farmers were in their attempts. But don't let the deeply rooted antebellum traditions of this area fool you. There's so much to experience here, like taking in the shops and boutiques at Perkins Road, or stepping back into time onto the USS Kidd that served in World War II. But to truly understand the history of plantation country, stop at LSU's Rural Life Museum and experience how life was early in the 20th century. Well, the Rural Life Museum is a complex made up of basically three different sections. We have the visitor center with the exhibit barn, which has a collection of everything under the sun. We have our architectural buildings, which is outside, and then we also have the Rural Life uh, Windrush Gardens about 32 acres of informal gardens, a lot of European statuary. It is a very nice place for people that are history buffs. People that come out here that really enjoy this kind of thing, you can be around here all day and still not see everything. Inside our exhibit barn, we have about 6,000 artifacts. Outside, in the, all the buildings are furnished with about three to 4,000 artifacts. So as you're walking around, there's a lot to see. We, we like to say that Louisiana really didn't come into the 20th century until World War II. Even during the 1930s, 1940s, people in Louisiana were still using and still doing things that their ancestors were doing 100, 200 years ago. Now that you have experienced what life was like back then, consider making some stops at some of our other numerous plantations, such as Laura or Nottoway, or even the Oakley House, where famous naturalist John James Audubon got his inspiration for his famous bird paintings. Uh, Oakley was built under a Spanish land grant issued to a gentleman named Ruffin Gray in 1797. Uh, they moved here from Homochita, to Mississippi in 1800 and they start construction of the house in the spring of 1800 using local materials. Of course, slave labor built the house. Um, it's unique because of the fact that it incorporates a uh, beach house, uh, Carolina Eye architecture style and you have a lot of the Caribbean influences on the house as well because of the jalouses on the front porch, the green slab board. Audubon was brought in 1821 to tutor a young lady named Eliza Peary. Uh, she was 16 years of age and the family was finishing her education. Of course, Audubon called this his happy land. He loved this area. He would uh, shoot his birds and uh, he would actually model them up in here and using local foliage and this type of thing. Uh, we have uh, two nature trails, but it's very nice, very scenic. Uh, it shows you around. Uh, we also have the museum, uh, which is located in that area. It has some of the Audubon Birds of America series in it. Uh, we get a lot of birders that come out in the spring and fall to see the migratory birds coming in and out of the area. History, shopping, art. So come out here and experience it all for yourself.